Hello, my name is Spencer Siegel, and I'm a senior at Ellington High School, and I'm part of the National Honor Society. Today, I thought I'd read you guys from a, from a part from one of my favorite books when I was a little kid, just like you, A Noble Guide for Young Squires. So, when, just a little bit of background information. My name is Spencer Siegel, and I really like history, knights being some of my favorites. And when I was little, this was one of my favorite books, because it's about knights and squires are about what you are before a knight, and then you ended up graduating and becoming a knight. And this is how to become a knight from being a squire. Anyway, I like the book. Knighthood, your noble destiny. Bad deeds. This is a rule, just some rules which knights should always follow. Bad deeds. A knight should always be ready to stand up to bullies. Knights of old. Tales of real knights can help to guide you. Read about great champions like Sir William and Marshall and be guided by his example. The Code of Chivalry. Like King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table, you must follow the Knight's, co Knight's Code of Chivalry, such as be honest and tell the truth, always help those in need, show bravery at all times, do not mind discomfort, be loyal and obey your leader, and never bribe or boast. And Storybook Knights. These are also good examples, and you will also learn by reading the tales of knights from the old storybooks such as Sir Lancelot du Lac, one of the greatest knights at the court of King Arthur. Let his story inspire you. A quote about knights from a medieval writer, a knight must fast often, drink little, be badly paid, get up early, often have bad horses and a hard end to the campaign. To be a knight is hard. However, it's rewarding and allows you to become a good person. Lessons in knighthood. Part two. And this is just the page. That was King Arthur's round table. That's a picture of a knight. Another one of a knight. And knights were almost always on horseback and they would use their lances for battle. And after they were done, after they charged into the enemy, they would usually use swords or maces or more close range, close counters weapons. So, knight's weapons. When you become a knight, your arms and armor will be your most valued possessions. Without them, you will not be able to fight or defend yourself. This can be very expensive, but they may save your life in battle. So buy the very best that you, can, that you are able to afford. Study the pictures on these pages. They show the armor, armor you will wear and the weapons you will learn how to use. Shields. Modern, shields do not use, modern knights do not use shields in battle because their armor gives them complete protection. The shields you see here have coats of arms painted on them. The large shield with the castle on it is called a pa pavis. That one right there. That was predominantly used by lots of crossbowmen and ranged soldiers when they had to turn around from reloading. It can be propped up and used as a sh shelter for archers. Thrusting weapons. When fighting from horseback, a knight uses his lance to charge at his enemies. On the left, you can see a battle lance with a pointed tip and a blunt lance, which is used for jousting, because jousting was a type of tournament was tournament fighting back then and was how it was a source of entertainment this part of the this the part of a helmet knight's helmet that is pulled down to protect his face is called the visor that's this right here and you can open the visor and close it as well it's used to protect the knight and it has limited limited visibility however it has great protection edged weapons your sword is often your most important weapon after your lance so you must keep it sharp Sharp. It is used for close combat and fighting on foot. When not in use, it is kept in a scabbard at your side. There are many types of swords, such as two-handed swords, such as this, one-handed swords, or daggers. Long-range weapons. In battle, you must be aware of archers. Crossbow, fi crossbow fire arrows called quarrels, which can pierce armor. Longbows can fire 12 arrows a minute. Those were the English longbow, longbows, and they were very famous during the Middle Ages. Although that pace requires a lot of practice. A suit of armor. This is the most iconic part of the knight, and what really distinguishes them from all other soldiers throughout history. This picture shows all the pieces that make a complete suit of armor. It takes time to place on each piece. Sometimes there's a little flap around the back for extra protection. Squires, preparing for knighthood. Before you can become a knight, you must spend several years working as a squire or valet. A squire is a young man who serves a knight, 
So first you must find a knight who will accept you, but you must choose wisely. If you choose a wicked knight, he is not likely to set a very good example. If you choose a lazy one, he won't teach you much at all. Instead, choose a good, kind, energetic knight who loves to go on plenty of daring adventures. So, this is an exa example, example of a young page. Pages turn into squires, and squires turn into knights. The knights are like this, the squires are like the knights' assistants. So, before you can become a squire, you must have worked as a page. A page leaves his parents' castle and goes to another castle to serve the knight and his squires. So this is like the assistant to the assistant. If you are lucky, you will not have to spend too much time sharpening your knight's weapons, one of the jobs of squires as well as pages. If your knight is very rich, he may have, will have, may have a well-stocked armory, but even the most battle-hardened knight can only do so much hacking and slashing in one day. Another job of squires and pages is weapons training. This will take up most of your time. Every day, you will need to develop your skills by fencing with mock swords made of wood or whalebone. While wearing leather practice armor, you will also learn to wrestle and to fight with a long stick called a quarterstaff. A good squire is always very busy following the knight on his adventures. Serve your knights well, and he will teach you everything you need to become a knight yourself. If your knight has been on one adventure too many, you may have to help him. If he is wounded, then you may have to carry him from the field of battle. This is one of the, jo this is one of the main jobs of squires. Spend plenty of time practicing sword fighting with one another. This skill could save your life on the battlefield. Since a knight is basically a mounted warrior, riding is also a very important skill. Before you begin, make sure you can tell one, tell one end of a horse from the other. You're likely to get saddle sores at first, but since you'll be spending a lot of time riding, they'll soon go away. A squire's life. What all, you'll also spend a lot of time polishing your knight's armor, and, it's, and you will do most of the shining. You can make yourself feel better if you remember that very soon you'll have your very own set of armor. To acquire it, you can either buy it, or if you are good enough, win it in a comp competition or joust. A squire must dedicate his life to learning from his knight. A good knight will teach you how to ride a horse, how to hunt, and how to fight with various weapons, as well as how to be chivalrous, which is the most important part of being a knight. He will also teach you how to outthink your opponents. A clever knight can almost always find ways to defeat an oppo opponent who is stronger than them. Horses, a knight's noble steed. Knights and horses are often found together. A knight rides a horse to travel on quests and adventures to joust with other knights to ride in battle and to hunt. Each knight needs at least three horses. A war horse, called a destrier, that has been trained for fighting, a lighter horse or palfrey for ordinary riding, and a pack horse to carry his weapons, his armor, his tents, and his equipment. Armor. In battle, horses may be protected with an armored headpiece known as a chaffron. Some have a spike like a unicorn head in the forehead. This was mostly for decorative design, but it could also be to scare opponents, as well as to maybe inflict damage. A palfrey. When a knight travels to war or goes on an adventure, he will ride a horse called a palfrey in order to keep his war horse fresh, rested, and ready for action. Saddles. This is one of the most important things about riding, as a saddle makes it much easier. Your war horse, also known as a destrier. Um, as wolves being trained not to be scared by the noise of battle, some war horses are taught to bite and to kick. A well-trained war horse is worth a great deal of money, as a good horse can mean the difference between life and death, as with most things a knight does. And a pack horse. A knight may use several pack horses depending on how much equipment he likes to carry with him when he goes traveling. And this is the last lesson for today. Heraldry. This was not only to knights, but really all noble families at the time. When a knight rides in full armor with his visor down at a joust or tournament, the only way to recognize him is by his coat of arms. This was also very true of medieval battlefields, as they didn't have uniform colors like how we Americans associate with red, white, and blue, and Britain with red, and so on and so forth. Back then, the only way to tell friend from foe on the medieval battlefield would be the different types of coats of arms. 
Because of this, squires and pages would spend hours upon hours memorizing coat of arms and where they're from, what kingdom they were a part of, whether they're part of France or Germany or Spain or Italy, etc. So, each knight's coat of arms has a particular design which is usually passed down from father to son. The science of describing coat of arms is called heraldry, and it uses words taken from Old French. In heraldry, instead of saying blue, you'd say azur, and instead of silver, argent. So, these are different types of heraldry as well as what people would wear, the items knights would wear, a surcoat, a jupon, and at one time a knight would cover his armor with a long surcoat to keep it cool. It was very easy to trip over the surcoat or to catch spurs in it. Now, surcoats are being replaced by the jupon, a hip-length garment of thick leather which gives extra protection. Heralds were experts at identifying the coats of arms of the participants in a tournament or battle. They could be very important, especially in battles, to distinguish who is your enemy and who is your ally. They keep a record of the coat of arms used by different knights. Sometimes they are called to cut to judge disputes over which family can use a particular picture or symbol on their coat of arms. Because at the time in medieval Europe, there would be hundreds, if not thousands, of noble families, so there was bound to be overlaps. And that could be very confusing, especially if they were in the same country or close to one another. Heralds would also announce the contestants at a jouster tournament and often read out a list of each knight's bravest and most bravest and most famous deeds. So, this is Sir Tristam's a famous knight's coat of arms. It's a red, it's a lot, it's a gold lion on a red background. This is Sir Percival with golden crosses on purple. And this is Sir Galahad. And this is also the Knights Templars who were a crusading order who protected people in the Holy Land. This is his coat of arms with a red cross and a white background. And these are the different colors for your coat of arms. Gold or yellow, argent, red, azure, black and black. And these are different types of uh, furs at the bottom, such as a squirrel fur or a white snow fur. And then if you look here, there, a knight's heraldry would also be on flags and banners, and you could have crests. And to identify themselves, knights would often wear a crest attached to their helmets, such as a fish, a crown, or a lion. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Spencer Siegel, and I'll see you next time.